may not be it may not be working <laughs> i hear it we <laughs> but i don't know if it's moving but it may be ticking like me it's kind of there but not necessarily on time or where it needs to be <laughs> that's hilarious but there is movement there you go that's the important part however small <laughs> it's still going <laughs> yeah really <laughs> all right well i am so excited because i am here today with Della, she is executive director of CASA. Yes. And so she has also been a foster parent as well, right? Mm -hmm. So she has been around and <laughs> she knows a lot of good stuff. So I'm excited to talk to her today about CASA and um, just, you know, all the ins and outs and <clears throat> learning all about it. And I really hope this can help somebody and maybe Me encourage too. somebody to become a CASA volunteer yes. as well, because I know it's such a big need. Mm -hmm. So. For those people that don't know what CASA stands for, can you tell us what it stands for? Yeah, it, it C-A-S-A mm -hmm. stands for Court Appointed Special Advocates. And so basically um, our volunteers mm -hmm. are appointed by the court mm -hmm. as the guardian ad litem. You may hear that in some of the states, call them guardian yes. ad litems, G-A-L. Mm -hmm. uh, in Georgia, they're called CASA and they report to the court. They're the, basically eyes and ears of the court mm -hmm. for the child. And um, our, our particular program is Enota CASA, mm -hmm. and Enota is our judicial circuit. So in this okay. area, that means the Enota judicial circuit and the Enota juvenile circuit mm -hmm. covers Lumpkin County, White County, Towns County, and Union County. So there's okay. a four county circuit and that is why we're called Enota and then CASA. Enota. So all of our volunteers okay. serve the children out of those four counties. Out of those areas. Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. So how do CASA volunteers help foster children? What is the role that they play that actually helps them? And and that is a great question. I I find that because I also serve on some cases as a volunteer CASA mm -hmm. and our daughter had a CASA thankfully, oh, um, okay. she, their level of participation in that mm. child's life is, CASA is such a unique model mm -hmm. anyway, because basically when you're in the courtroom, you've got the judge, yeah. you've got the court reporter, you've got the attorney for the department, you've got the attorney for the kids, you've got the yeah. attorney, and all these people, attorney for the parents, um, and they're all, everybody in the room is paid. All the actors are paid except for the CASA. Except for CASA, yeah. They're volunteers. Mm -hmm. And the their only focus is that child. So while mm -hmm. that child's attorney is focused on the child, yeah, <clears throat> they may have 15, 20, probably more than that cases. Mm -hmm. and But that CASA is only focused on that child. Mm -hmm. So that CASA has the time to contact parents, contact, maybe find grandparents that nobody knew about because mm -hmm. I don't know where grandma and grandpa yeah. are because I'm a drug addict and I'm mad at mom and dad or, you know, I don't want you to know where they are. Yeah. I don't even want them to know I have a child. But so what's happened is the CASA will find out about those kinship placements mm, okay. um, or support systems. Yeah brothers and sisters they may not know oh, about which you know is great. cute oh i could yeah. cry because i think of several yeah. several of those instances mm -hmm. where children have found siblings they didn't know they had um but that casa is appointed to the child from the moment they enter foster care mm -hmm. all throughout their stay in foster care and until they achieve what That's we call great. permanency which is a safe and loving home mm -hmm. um we know their are uh, you understand and many do that their defects case manager is probably going to change right, right who do i call this week yeah yeah <laughs> and when you do call them they're they're so busy yeah, they're they've got so, so many yeah. cases yeah. and so many pieces to each case yeah. I, I always tell them i don't know how they keep up <laughs> i i don't either <laughs> so i don't either it's amazing it is definitely so, a calling <laughs> i think that yeah for sure and i think that's why the casa is so important, right? Because their focus, like you said, is mm -hmm. just on that one child. So they right. can really, really in, be there and dive into their life right. and be that one consistent person. Mm -hmm. So you said that they are there from the moment the child enters the foster care system all the way through when, wherever they that permanency. achieve permanency. Right. So they don't leave them. So it could mm -hmm. be 
three months. It could be a year. It could uh, it's be usually at years. least a year at and year. often okay. two years. Okay. Um, if a case for some reason has gone on for multiple years, um, we tend to get pretty ruffled up because we don't, as, as most obviously folks in, in the system don't want children to languish. Yeah. Um, but sometimes there's other factors which cause a case to delay, 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 because you mm -hmm. don't want to violate parental rights or other things sure. like that. Um, because we always want the children to be reunified if possible. Yeah, absolutely. But our focus, you'll hear for CASA, our focus is always the best interest of the child. Mm -hmm. And we have what's called best interest factors. Okay. And those best, we, and we train the volunteers towards those mm -hmm. best interest factors. So yeah. that could be everything from um, what is their culture? Mm -hmm. You know, here in the Appalachian, North Georgia area, um, we all kind of look the same. We tend to have a very similar background and experience, but not always. Mm -hmm. So, um, but we'll have tribal children. We may have Jewish children. Mm -hmm. We may have Muslim children. Um, and there, or there may just be some uh, family values that are very different than what maybe most, the majority of folks would have. And we yeah. need to honor some of those yeah. and Absolutely. keep that cultural heritage um, alive in their, in their families. But so we, we look at all those, best, we really are passionate about siblings because we found the statistics around siblings being separated, yeah. Um, as well as when siblings stay in contact, they they're the emotional stability that that gives them, not mm -hmm. just present day, but over long term. We found statistically that 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 really helps them over time yeah. uh, because their support system is just much more broadened, yeah. right? Yeah. And the depth of those relationships obviously start at birth, <laughs> at birth yeah. and, and they're so important. Yeah. Um, and there's off, a lot of times that shared trauma. And so what we do is we try to go through all the education, mental health, physical health, yeah. developmental. So all of those best interest factors mm -hmm. are ones that we report on to the judge and we gather information for the judge on that. We see the child at a minimum once a month. Okay. And it could be at their school. It could be at their daycare. Mm -hmm. It could be often it's in their home or mm -hmm. their foster home or at a yeah. visit. You know, maybe mm -hmm. mom's got a visit. We'll go to the DFOX office or maybe mom's got a supervised visit. Like I went and visited a mom. She just got an apartment mm -hmm. and she was had her had her baby there. Yeah. <clears throat> it was supervised, but I got to see her apartment, yeah. see her play with the child and the room was all set up and That's great. um and just to see the interaction. I could tell the judge about that mm -hmm. interaction and just yeah. the little fun things about how um I noticed mom now is uh, baby will, you, baby will say, you know, say certain things that, that, uh, you know, certain babbles and mom knows instantly what she needs, oh, which is so exciting. That's great. Right. Yeah, I love and that. those are things that, that the attorney might not know or the case manager. Right. They just don't have the time. Right. Yeah. So they get to see those things happening in, <clears throat> right. in real life in mm -hmm. real time. And then they can. And then the, let's, let me give you an example of a young girl that I was advocating for. She's now had a permanent guardianship. She was 11 at the time, and um, she just was talking about, you know, I miss my, this particular, I'll call it a toy, but it was very important to her, mm -hmm. and we were able, she, would, she just kept sharing that with me, and everybody kept kind of saying, that's not the most important thing. We were finally able to get that for her, and I don't know, it just calmed her instantly. Mm -hmm. Well, we found out it was something that was given to her um, by a neighbor that she really trusted and loved. Oh, and that made her feel very secure. Yeah. It was a reminder for her of security and how love felt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. good, good love. Yeah. Feels, and it's, right? yeah, yeah. And it's something that maybe someone would look at that and be like, mm, Not I don't really understand. But now but... here it's been uh, a year or more and I'll still get text messages from her. She'll show me her little oh Halloween face. And, but, and so especially as the children are older, mm -hmm. the interesting thing about the CASA relationship with the child is it doesn't, it, it doesn't stop. It's not, okay, it's transactional. We do this, we do this and we're done. Right. It's a, it's a deeply emotional bond, yeah. which, which we hope, you know, you'll hear yeah. people say, oh, I couldn't do that work. I will be, you know, I want to take every one of them home and, and I just couldn't do it. Okay, good. We want you. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> it. We want somebody who feels that way right. because we want you to 
fight for this child yeah. and be a bulldog for that child yeah. as if they were your child. Right. And those are the ones we do want. So I tell them, no, 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 we want you. It's okay. Yeah, you know? yeah. because they have that passion and they have that love for them, <laughs> yes, right? Yes. That it's like they need that. Like yeah. they need that attachment with somebody like that. Yes. Like, and the power like of having adults in your life, in your community, yeah. that say you matter. That's huge. That's you're huge. you're a child in my community who's been abused, discarded. Mm. You don't matter. Yeah. And you're being pushed around to great homes. It's not the foster families are not great homes, right. but it's very confusing. And so yeah. anytime, as you know, when adults can come in, in whatever stage of this whole process yeah. and say, you matter, right? you're important and you're safe. Yeah. And it's that oh. consistency mm -hmm. that the adult is in their life. Right. Because they don't have consistency. They've not probably had that. Yeah ever yeah and especially if they're going from one foster home to another so mm -hmm. i think that yeah and that's why i love casas because like you said it's ongoing even after permanency you can mm -hmm. keep in contact with them and still remain in their life right. and be that <laughs> consistent adult for them so yeah and I we get that. to ask questions and do things that foster families don't get to do. Oh, so, okay, like, okay, okay. <laughs> well, no. for example, you know, we're not allowed to tell you what's happening with the parents. We're not allowed mm -hmm. to share all of that information. But yeah. what we can do is you may be hearing things uh, as often you do. Uh, the child may be just saying some things. You can't quite put your finger on it. But what you what you can do is say to the cost that, you know, this is the child is saying things or they're behaving in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And I have some concerns. Do yeah. you think maybe you might want to, when you talk with the parent or maybe, maybe you could be there at this next visit and see where this language or this turn of phrase or something just doesn't feel right. Yeah. Could you kind of, would you think you could check that out for yeah. me just so we can make sure nothing is, off kilter, the right. child doesn't understand, and I, maybe I can help translate that mm. better. Yeah. Um, so those are ways that just, that's a very simple thing, but there's also some things that folks in the community will say, well, yeah, I heard from so-and-so who heard from so-and-so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and But what then we can do is not based on hearsay. We can actually go visit. That court mm -hmm. order gives us mm -hmm. the ability to talk to all the parties in the case, mm -hmm. meaning, yeah their medical records, their mental health records, wow, okay. their drug screens, yeah. their police reports, anything mm -hmm. that that we could get potentially get records on, we can you get. You can get them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been able to get medical records and notes from doctor's offices, mental health professionals. I've been able to talk to landlords. I've been, and, and that takes away the HIPAA issues that that are there to protect us, mm -hmm. but also now allow us to go in and get the information that, that we need, need. Yeah. Yeah. legally because we have that court order. We are yes. court ordered. Okay. okay, yeah. We are court appointed mm -hmm. and we have a court order mm -hmm. to be okay? able to do those things. And we can go visit at the parent home anytime we want. We mm -hmm. often try to, well, I, we do try to make an appointment, mm -hmm. but there have been times when there's been some concerns that mom has boyfriend there who maybe alle was allegedly um, abusive against the child mm -hmm. and she's supposed to have no contact, but she's having him over and we see a vehicle there and we're like, mm -hmm. hmm, What's you know, on? yeah. yeah. And yeah. so we may go with the caseworker or somebody and yeah. knock, do a door knock and say, Hey, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah so your eyes are everywhere. Right. And we, is... and the CASA has the time to do that. So can you yes. imagine a caseworker? who is trying no. to deal with not only educational, medical, what, and yeah. all of the things from that, yeah. as well as prepare for court right. for 30, 40 kids. Right, not just one kid, no. multiple kids. <laughs> and I yeah. don't know how they manage all that, but th that's yeah. what the beauty of that CASA volunteer yeah. is. Yeah. I and love they're that. invested in the community, and they care because mm -hmm. that's our kid. Yeah. That's a child from my community. Right, and I think, I mean, that is huge because when the family unit at home is not intact, not secure, dysfunctional, right. unhealthy, it affects the community around it them. Does. Mm -hmm. And so when we can help that family, mm -hmm. you know, get back on their feet, say, mm -hmm. hey, you know, you can do this, be an encouragement, like lift them up. 
help them get to where they need to be. And then it helps the community in a whole. Absolutely. And you have, yeah. that is just so beautiful the way you said that, because what it makes me think about is you know, you've heard the phrase, if, if you don't win, I don't win. We all lose, you know, we all lose. Yeah. So if this child doesn't win, right. We're all losing. Right. And so one of the interesting things that, uh, uh, through the national CASA, you know, which is, which is throughout the United States, uh, the association, they had a campaign and we often still use the phrase change a child's story. Mm. And so when it, that's what it made me think about when you said that, because when we, when we, including foster families yeah. say, I'm going to step in. No, yeah. it's no, it's not a perfect system. No. And I'm not against defects or the attorneys or whatever. Yeah. You can make anybody the enemy. Yeah. But the fact is they're there right. and they're doing the work. Yeah. When a lot of people have said this ain't, uh, uh-uh, I don't want to, it. yeah. but who's going to be there? Right. You know? And so the fact that these folks are there and willing to have the hard days Mm -hmm. because they know they're going to change that child's story for the future. Yeah, which is huge. You're literally changing, like I think it was Dave Ramsey who says, change your family tree, you know? (laughs) I love it. So literally you are changing that child's family tree. Absolutely. And for for success. Yeah. And you could be breaking change that that you didn't even know were there absolutely and you know when you step in and you help somebody like that you just never know what they can take off and then because how many times as a foster parent have you had you know the case background but it could be months years later you've learned things that the child finally feels safe enough to drips and drizzles of information and you're like wow that trauma, there's way more to it. Right. But they're at a point now where they actually feel safe. And mm-hmm. so they're, that where those things can be dealt with, where they would have never been dealt with. Right, right. You are ch- literally changing and healing someone who, right. who would otherwise be broken, mm-hmm. stunted emotionally, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh. huge it's powerful oh it is so it is. i just got chills i just love i'm just so <laughs> passionate about my foster families because they're there 24 7 you know mm-hmm. i i only know what it's like from having a teenager but um those the nonverbals and those that are verbal but they're acting out and we as casas don't see that mm-hmm. the 24 yeah. 7 the right. little nuances and mm-hmm. so that's why i say when because you guys see those things those little nuances and you're noticing a change of when jimmy comes home and his asthma's a little worse he's just kind of cranky he's a little lethargic but yet he's eating really good i mean he ate better than he had yeah and then when you say i'm not really sure but then when casa goes there and finds out at the visit with mom that there's hair all over the floor. Mm, he's mm-hmm. got an asthma autoimmune disorder. Yeah. He's not walking well because he's got developmental delays, crawling on the floor and there's that and what else on the floor. Yeah. Mom is smoking around the child. Um, mm-hmm. Those kind of things. And she doesn't want to feed or give the child water because it's only two hours and she doesn't have the diapers because I don't have the money to change him, mm. to give him diapers. Yeah. So when we find out those things, what that does is that then allows the CASA to report back to the judge. Yes, the mom is playing with the child and doing that, but she's not able to think through for the child's best interest. interest, That the child must have something to eat, must have something to drink. The floor needs to be cleaned or something on it if you're going to allow him to be on because he has he's high risk medical. Mm -hmm. So you would never know that because you can't go to those visits. Right. But you've kind of said something is off and I don't know why Mm -hmm. we're continuing to, we're making progress, but then we go backwards medically or emotionally. Yeah. He's not getting fed at the home. Well, that's normal for him. You know, maybe it's an older child and now during the visits, he's not getting fed again with mom because I don't have the money to pay for that, but it's a trigger for him. You know, the older children, Mm -hmm. the food hoarding thing. We all know about that with children. Well, and that's why it just takes, a village of people to step in and just be around these kids Yes, because the more eyes that are on the kid, the Mm -hmm. more that we can help them essentially at the end of the day. And so that's what it's all about. It's all about them. So 
is the reunification rate higher for a foster child when they have a GASA volunteer? You know, I, I thought about that um, when you had mentioned that as a potential question mm -hmm. that we could talk about. And I have, I have, I have presented that information oftentimes when I write grants. Mm -hmm. And while, let me, let me give you a little bit of a scenario. And I've had to come, my thought was always, if we reunify, it's a win, right? Yeah. Yeah, but then I see the other number of children that are re-entering foster care after they're reunified with their parent, biological parent. Yeah, we had okay. fourteen children in our circuit that were reunified um, at some point uh, and have re-entered foster care. None of whom had a casa. Okay. So if we say, I'm gonna cry because I know some Aww. of those children's cases and it just breaks my heart. Mm. If we say that reunification is the goal, then we would have won, right? Mm. But if we say child's best interest, safe, permanent, loving home, mm -hmm. stability is the goal, then reunification is not always the win. So that is sure, why that the best sense. interest factor yeah. has to be. So <clears throat> yeah. in, some, in some places, you will see reunification rates higher, and that's great. For ours, we're not always at, with CASAs are not always th that way. And CASAs may not necessarily mean the case is going to close faster. Okay. And I, again, that was another misnomer I had about, okay, reunification closes the case faster. That means the child's not in foster care as long, and that's a win. Yes and no. Yeah. But if you find, yeah, mom's doing great and then she falls off the rails and we're seeing some concerning behavior, mm -hmm. let's put her, okay, yeah, but can we continue some unsupervised visits or, you know, for maybe a, another month or so, see what happens. Yeah. And then all of a sudden mom's falling off. You give yourself that chance to have that protection around that child a little longer, mm -hmm. which then lowers your rate of reentry into foster care. Um, because the other statistic is when, that we really don't know is when some of these children are reunified, which most of the time is great, but there are some that are reunified prematurely and they don't reenter foster care because why? They're transient now. They're mm -hmm. running from each, the department knows something's going on. Now I got to run to a different county. Now I got to run oh, okay. to a different state okay. and you'll never see those kids again. Yeah. So. I, I struggle with how to answer. Yeah. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, I struggle with how to it say yeah. what is a win. And so yeah. for me, the win is what's best for the child. Right. Right. Absolutely. So the yeah. child's not doing this ping pong thing back yeah. and forth. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, makes so that may not sense. be a good answer. No, no. I <laughs> it's mean, not a clear cut answer. <laughs> yeah. And that's okay. Sometimes there just isn't a clear cut answer. Right. Especially in this world. Right. I know. Like, and it and it's tough, you know. There's tough decisions that have to be made. You're right. And so, um, but you're right. At the end of the day, it's what's best for the child. And if it's best for them to go back to their parents, then great, yay. If it's best for them to go and be adopted by a, a foster family yes. or somebody else, then yay. Like mm -hmm. whatever that is, you know. Well, and one one case, for example, um, if we would have used the timing as the win. Mm -hmm. Mom would not have got her child back, but because we said, okay, you are making progress. You're doing well. You've yeah. had a setback. If you keep doing what you're doing and moving forward, you're going to be okay. This yeah. is going to work out. Yeah. And she was able, she could not do it before. So why was it first time out? We thought she could do it again. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as I encouraged her, give it another try. If you can do it, you get your child back. If mm -hmm. not, we can work something out with a guardian so yeah. you can you can have visitation. Yeah. She's real down on herself, but she was able to get her apartment and maintain her job, get an get a um, increase, you know, promotion. Mm -hmm. And the child was in care another nine months, mm -hmm. but she was reunified with the child. And it was a great thing. It was a, and it, it still is. I see the child around all the time. Mm, that's awesome. But if we would have not given that extra time, 
but then sometimes we give the extra time and, it and, it's, and then everybody's like, really, we, why are we waiting? The child just, this is just miserable. Yeah. Child doesn't want to see mom and dad, you know, yeah. mom shows up half the time, yeah. not half the time. So it's it's, like, sometimes it's good and sometimes it's yeah. not good. And that's the thing. You just it's never, you never know though, right? right. Which direction it's going to go. And it's, mm -hmm. you cannot control the outcome mm -hmm. like by any means. Right. And you can't control a person no. and their actions. <laughs> so. but, the, but the struggle is actually worth it. I yeah. know it is on the on the foster family side, mm -hmm. but for the CASA, we want justice and we want it done right for these kids. You yeah. know, and this is where we live in this little yeah. court world. <laughs> but 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 the fight is worth it is what I tell yeah. our volunteers. And they're like, you're right. Yeah, it is. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We touched on this earlier. Does every foster child get a CASA? They are by law in the state of Georgia, they should have a guardian ad litem um, or a CASA. Okay. And guardian so ad litem, they can have both actually, because what oh, it is, okay. <clears throat> every child will have an attorney, the child's attorney, okay. which is their guardian ad litem by default. Mm -hmm. But we do know that children who have a CASA um, achieve permanency faster don't are not re-entered into foster care they achieve they are more likely to have their medical needs met mm -hmm. graduate from high school things like that because they're mm -hmm. getting their educational needs and mm -hmm. the programs surrounding yeah. them and um, that's based on statistics that's statistical data nationwide wow okay right. that's awesome and so that's why we know the value of this program yeah. we kind of know it intrinsically but then to have the data around right. it is that's very huge. powerful yeah yeah so um we we hope that the the children will you know find that permanency within a within a certain amount of time but that's not always the case yeah, yeah. Okay. well and to be a volunteer let me tell you about this because yeah. some folks they're like i i don't have the ability i don't have the wherewithal to foster at this time mm -hmm. and so but i have a passion for children that are that are experiencing this mm -hmm. this type of trauma yeah and so we train volunteers. They go through a, a 30 hours of training. Okay. A lot. Yeah. It is. And we cover all those best interest factors. Yeah. We teach them how to write a court report. Mm -hmm. Is how this to all do, in person? This so, training yeah, it can, it can be either. It so be either. we like to do in person because yeah. it's more fun, actually, yeah. as we work as a group. <laughs> But the, obviously, we have Blood Mountain in the middle of us. So oh, yes, when you go do. from Dahlonega to Towns <laughs> County, yeah. it's going to take you an hour. Yeah. And there's one way to get there, one way to get back. Yeah. And it's only up and over yeah. both ways. <laughs> yeah. So we do understand sometimes it's not possible. Yeah. So we, we do both. We do a hybrid. Okay. That's but so they're, they're working through all of these, um, the, the curriculum. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like so much. But I will tell you, once they get in it, it's like they just can't get enough. You know, uh, yeah, because yeah, they get they start to it. see the impact mm -hmm. of how they participate in yeah. the program, yeah, and how to make good choices and clear decisions about what information should be presented how and how. Yeah. Um. After they do their in class training, they need to do ten hours of court observation. So they physically go to court. Yes. And oh, what we do that's neat. Okay. in the past, it was that. always do your class and do your court observation. What we've done is we've said you need to just go ahead and start doing your court observation because mm -hmm. what we found was once they're in court and then they come to class, they're like, okay, now this totally makes sense. And they're like, yes, did you see that CASA? She stood up and said, I understand dad wants to continue visits, but dad's never even made one of the visits. He's had 20 opportunities, yeah. you know, yeah. and they're like, I get it now, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or I see them all talking to the yeah. side before it goes to the, you yeah. know, so that so they, they get, get to see it and they see mm -hmm. how they interact mm -hmm. and that interplay within the courtroom. And that makes a huge difference mm -hmm. because then the information becomes alive. Yeah. Um, and then after, and this morning, actually, we had a volunteer that was uh, sworn in as a CASA. Mm -hmm. So he had completed his training, his court mm -hmm. hours, That's and then amazing. he he was yeah. sworn in as, and he's got to, he got to meet the dad, and I think the foster parent was, mm -hmm. were also at the court that he was going to take. Oh, their okay. Case. Yeah, yeah. So that yeah, was exciting. Yeah. yeah, that was. Yeah, exciting. I have a friend who. Uh, did CASA and she did it for seven years and oh, she loved wow. it. She, yeah. I mean, she is like such an advocate. She's like, just do it. Like yeah. you need to do it. You need to do it. And I actually just had a friend, a close friend of mine. She called me about a week ago and she's like, oh my gosh, Rachel. She's like, I just, 
She said, because of you, I just called CASA and I'm going <laughs> to go be a volunteer. And I, I was like, it. yes. Well, and I had a young, I had a woman who um, she's, I would say she's senior adult now. And she's just, she's very well educated, very well spoken. But in her mind, she was not the, you know, the, the advocate, the one out in the front, you know, as well as her husband was kind of the, the big shop business person and always knew the right things to say and how to be. And she was fine just kind of being in the background. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that now that she has, I was encouraging her um, about being a CASA because they had adopted two children and understand the struggles. And, uh, and she had her first time the other day in court where she really had to step up and say something that was yeah. basically her opinion contrary to what everyone was saying and she was so nervous and but but one of our uh, trainees was in the in the courtroom that time and he said she was amazing oh my goodness and then when oh. i told her what he what she said no i was fumbling over my words and whatever <laughs> and i said well what happened and she said well the judge agreed with me and i was like there you go does See? the judge always agree with you and she said no i said did he agree with what you said I said, then it was valid, it was important, and it needed to be said. Mm, Good for you. And then I yeah. told her what the other, you know, trainees had said. And she was like, oh, wow. Well, now I can't hold her back. <laughs> <laughs> She's a beast. <laughs> That's amazing. She's found her voice. Exactly. Which means now the child has a voice. Exactly. Oh, I love that. I love that. I know. Like, I gotta... How can people become volunteers in their states like oh that's a great question yeah so because i want to put a yes, link for yes people it's, because... there's a the national program mm -hmm. that we all affiliate with right mm -hmm. we're our own each of us are our own nonprofit. Mm -hmm. okay okay um so we while we choose to affiliate and participate under the national cost of standards okay which is important because yeah. that's the way the pr the model works most effectively is mm -hmm. the way that it's laid out you can go to National CASA, type in, find the program, mm -hmm. or in your state. So here in Georgia, it would be Georgia CASA, GeorgiaCASA.org, mm -hmm. and you can find a local program. You can even say, I want to inquire about being a volunteer. Mm -hmm. I've had people call me just because they knew I worked with CASA, and they're in North Carolina, and they go, where do I go? You know, uh, I think it's GAL in in north carolina mm -hmm. for example so i'll just call up the director there and say hey mm -hmm. i've got somebody who wants to talk to you yeah and you know so we all are helping out one another because it's that's not right. about my program or your program right. it's about our kids right exactly <laughs> so that's that's the best way to start out mm -hmm. and there's some great you know you can youtube video anything search anything Nowadays, some great yeah little snippets and videos about what a CASA does. Um, but yeah, that's always available. And yeah. just because you take the training doesn't mean you have to do the, uh, you have to be an advocate. Some people, they begin to go through the training and they're like, oh, right now is not a good time for me. Okay. And that's okay. And I actually had one lady who did that recently, mm -hmm. but she said, but what I can do right now, because mm -hmm. my daughter's situation has changed mm -hmm. and my, that means my schedule has changed. Yeah. I want to help be on your board of directors. Mm -hmm. um, I had three who, yeah. who started the training and they said, I am absolutely not good at the interpersonal. And I know that's not my thing, but yeah. I love to help plan events and do it. So yeah. can I help you with your fundraising? Oh, that's right. Awesome. Yeah. Um, can I help you with the pinwheels for child mm -hmm. abuse prevention mm -hmm. month? <clears throat> plant the pinwheel gardens. Yeah. So there's a place for everyone. And I don't have to sell why CASA is a good thing. because, And you don't have to sell why being right. a foster parent is important. We all know because the kids the kids are important and they need us. Right. It's just right. we know it. Yeah. So it's just learning where do you fit in that process mm -hmm. and how can you provide that support. Yeah, because there's so many different ways that you can help. Yes. And it doesn't just have to be so cookie cutter like, oh, you have to do this cause, and there's nothing else. Right. Like, and I like that you said that even though you start the process of becoming a volunteer and you might, you know, stop and be like, oh, I don't think this is for me. Like, you're not forced to keep going. No, no, which no, is no. Great. And because the more people learn about the whole process, yeah. whether it's through a CASA training program, the more they understand the reality of what these children face. And these right. children are not seen 
because they can't be seen really we can't promote right. say here's little johnny he's been in foster care for three months and he needs help and I, you can't i mean it's you a you that. have to be able to tell the story around it mm -hmm. in order for people to get it but people do get it they understand yeah um but again i've had people who said well i took the train a couple of years ago and now i'm ready i it wasn't the right time yeah um typically i've i the for, for the Folks who work full time, this is what I tell them. Most of our folks work part time or retired, mm -hmm. but so quite a quite a lot of our folks do work full time. And what I tell them is, at the beginning of the case is when you're going to spend the most time, maybe mm -hmm. six or seven hours in the first month. Mm -hmm. After that, you're required to visit the child once a month. Okay, and um, you'll probably make some phone calls, gather some information, mm -hmm. maybe three or four hours. Uh, it may be every three months we have a court hearing. Um, it may be a few more hours if there's a court hearing. If you can't make that court hearing, like sometimes our full-time folks can't make that hearing, we have for each county a paid advocate supervisor through our program mm -hmm. who literally is your coach and walks with you hand in hand. So oh, when you submit great. your report, yeah. they're going to go through it. If you have questions, okay. they're going to say, "This is well, let's handle it this way. Yeah. Or they're like, I don't even know. What do we do? How do we do? And then the the volunteer, the soup, the advocate supervisor works with that volunteer to through the entire case. So you're never like on your own. Uh, in court. Yeah, you're never alone. You okay. literally have that person beside you. That is but you're really the expert in the case. Yeah. And so that's yes. why you're critical. Yeah. We just help navigate to make sure nobody falls off the rails and does right. the wrong thing, which people usually don't. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really great thing to know. Because it's that, scary. That you have, right. Yeah. That you have kind of like a backup. Like, I'm not a lawyer. What am I going to do? It's I know, okay. Right? We got your person. <laughs> <laughs> Lean on your supervisor. So even your CASA has a person. That's right. They have that, that supervisor that truly walks with them, keeps them posted about when the court dates are. Mm -hmm. Um, who I'm having trouble getting someone from DFAX to call me back. Who do I call? Okay. Well, let's reach out to so-and-so and, yeah. and this is how you could potentially yeah. get that information. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So what is one last thing that you would say to people that are maybe considering it? Like, you know, should I do it? Should I not do it? Like what, what would you say to them? I would say the first thing is if you know, you can pass a background check and get your fingerprints done. That's often the hardest part because mm -hmm. you're trying to schedule all of that Yeah, and filling out the paperwork. Um, the training can appear to be daunting because you say 30 hours, but I will tell you every class I have taught, they come in and they say, where did the time go? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, that's great. Right. Because they realize just, and they'll say, I'm not doing that much, but the impact is so great. Mm -hmm. So take what you have. And as a woman of faith, I say, take that loaf and the two fishes, you know, the loaf yes. and give it to the Lord and he will multiply it. Multiply. Yep. So again, and there is, that is just a universal principle, whether you're a person of faith or not, give what you have and what you've been given, the talents you've been given, mm -hmm. the voice you've been given and step out because someone is praying for you to be there to help them. And you don't you don't know they've been asking God. They've been begging God for help. Mm -hmm. And you could be that one. That foster mom may be sitting there going, God, please, I need help. I don't know how to help this child. Mm -hmm. And you may be just the person that comes in to help change the direction enough mm -hmm. to help that foster family keep going and providing the support and just give it a try. And it's okay if you fail because yeah. at least you've tried. Right, right. And honestly, I don't think I've seen anybody fail. Yeah. I've been doing this for a long time. It's, <laughs> lots, it's It'd be really hard to fail because anything you're doing is helping. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's helping. And you just never know until you take that step out, right? Yes. And because it's scary. I mean, can you imagine? Yeah. I can't imagine yeah. stepping back and going, I'm opening my home to children I don't know and all this chaos I don't know. Yeah. There's so much unknown. Yeah. So you much are. unknown. Yeah. But are you guaranteed to know anyway what's fixing to happen <laughs> right. in your own life, whether you have the kids or not? I know. No, you so, sure don't. When you, you step out that door, out. That's right. you, probably, you don't know what's going to happen that day. And so, yeah, it's just, um, we have to remember that it's, 
this life is just not about ourselves. Oh, no. Like we are here to serve others, That's whatever right. that looks like yes. for each person individually mm -hmm. and just do it. Just That's right. help because we need each other at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And, and you don't have to be perfect. No. And you're not going to be no. like, and that's okay. Like, yes. we're not meant to be. No. <laughs> but you do it. Sometimes and you... we feel like we got to be, darn it. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. But, oh. but it's enough. Mm -hmm. The little bit or the lot or whatever you can give is so much more than these kids often have ever had. Yeah. You know, the fact that you're willing to just say, good morning, how are you? And put breakfast in front of them. They may not have ever had They've that. They probably never had it. I, our daughter didn't have anybody who woke up with her in the mornings. Mm. She had to wake her, get herself up. She had yeah. to feed her younger brother. Mm. And uh, otherwise, they wouldn't get fed. Yeah. There was nobody to wake her up and say, good morning. Mm. And that's a lot. Yeah. And you're enough. Yeah. So I say, do it. Yes. <laughs> or I will put a link in the description for Casa. So if anybody is interested in doing it, Thank they can you. click on it and um, yeah. And there's no dumb questions. No. I'm sure you've told that to folks. Yeah, there definitely is not. Just please. Like, there's no dumb just, questions. <laughs> just ask. Ask. Yes. Anything you have, just ask. And it's and it's all good. Like <laughs> We're happy to tell you. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Oh, thank that, you. I mean, you were super helpful, full of amazing, amazing knowledge and information. Like, I think this will certainly help people. Good. And, and I want to tell folks, for wherever your local CASA program is, don't feel weird about just picking up the phone and saying, I'm trying to help or I need to do this. Who do I call? Yeah. Who knows? Because we help move people towards the right people. Yes. And we like to bring resources to different, whether it's the children, the families, mm -hmm. whatever. So give us a call. If we don't know, we'll find out for you. Yeah. We want to help our community partners. We want to help our community. And that is with every CASA program. Um, so don't hesitate, yeah, especially churches have reached out to us and said, how can we, we're trying to start the foster care ministry. What do we do? Yeah. And we'll say, Hey, let us help you connect with your defects program and some of the yeah. other programs. Just reach out because the people that do all of this kind of work, whether mm -hmm. it's foster families or CASA, they want to help and give them the opportunity to share yeah. what they know and don't reinvent the wheel. So don't be afraid to ask. Right. Yeah. Don't be, you don't have to be a CASA. Just give us a call. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Give us a call. Give us a call. <laughs> or give her a call. Give me a call. <laughs> I'll tell you who to talk to, but I don't have the answer. <laughs> there we go. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. I hope you learned a lot from this. There was so much good information here. And if you choose to be a CASA volunteer, you will go to nationalcasagal.org, and then you'll choose the state that you're from, and then go from there. The link to that is in the description below. And you guys, stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss my next episode.